Hey guys, Jexy here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. I found a video um, where somebody shared their experience with NA um, that was very negative. And I thought we could take a watch of it and I can give you some of my thoughts. So let's get into it. <music> Okay, so before we even start watching it, a um, couple things to know. One, I did clip it, so we're not watching the whole video straight through. Um, I was originally going to do it that way, but with my new computer and having different programs, it took a lot more work than you think. Um, number two, and this is the most important, we are not watching this video to give this woman any hate, okay? Zero hate. Here's the point. The only reason I'm doing this is not for me to say all the reasons why she's wrong, right? Because that would be ridiculous. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. The reason I'm doing this is because this is a lot of newcomers' experience with Narcotics Anonymous. And if we don't recognize that a lot of times when people come into NA, they have these experiences, we can't change ourselves to be more welcoming and open and accepting to the ideas that Many times when somebody walks into an NA meeting, it's scary, it seems cultish, and people are really strange, right? Like, that is such a normal feeling. So I'm going to go through some of her points in this video and explain, like, why I can understand why she thinks that, what she may be referring to, and things like that. So all I ask is this. If you go and watch her video, her actual video, which I will link in the description, what I ask is that you leave a super loving and kind comment. I read the comments on her video and I was blown away that people with long-term recovery were being so negative and hateful. As far as we know, this is a newcomer in recovery bravely, bravely sharing her experience on the internet and we're going to go and, and talk down to her? That is not what this program, it's not what Narcotics Anonymous or any other 12-step program is about. So if you choose to watch her video, I ask that you please leave a comment on it that is supportive, loving, and kind. Um, because that's how we need to be with people who disagree, right? You don't have to like a program. But we need to listen to what other people's perspectives are because that's how we grow, how else would we know that we're giving off some sort of creepy vibe if somebody doesn't bravely tell us? So that's where we're coming at with this reaction video is I'm going to take what she says. I'm going to explain it a little bit and give my thoughts about it. Um, but yeah, please, if any negativity comes from this video being done, whether it's a negative comment in my own comment section about her or something that's written in hers, I will take the video down because that is not what this is about. But I thought it would be a good learning experience for all of us to kind of see why sometimes people think NA is crazy. So let's get into it. <laughs> like most people who are considered addicted to drugs and you know, have tried various solutions, uh, I went to ANA for a while and AA because for some reason there was this place that did both AA and NA meetings and there was just an overlap between the people who went. So I just would go to like either because, you know, it was a lot of the same people. Um, okay, so I think this first off sets it up for why there's a lot of confusion. You'll see very often she overlaps NA and AA as if they're the same thing, one just being for drugs, one being for alcohol. Now, those of us who are in a 12-step program know that there's actually a lot more differences between AA and NA besides just that they're for different substances, right? What I think she's referring to is sometimes you see these like recovery clubhouses where it's a building that is rented out just for places to have meetings. And although I think they're great, I do think there ends up being a lot of confusion between AA and NA when they're both happening at the same place and the same people who visit that place tend to go to both meetings. Uh, those types of programs, if for example, if you're at a place where there's a lot of AA meetings uh, and you're an NA meeting, you're a little bit more tolerant of people saying sober instead of clean, for people to make references to things that aren't necessarily NA and vice versa. You know, you may be in an AA meeting saying that I'm an addict and there's a little bit more tolerance for that. So I do think the fact that she's grouping both programs together does lead to why there's some confusion as those of us who are in these programs do see that there's a significant difference between the two. 
Um, and I was pretty freaked out. The people there freaked me out. The way they just repeated the same sort of like slogans and phrases. And it's like they didn't. Okay, I hear this a lot from people about the repeating the same slogans and phrases all the time. And yeah, it does seem real strange when people use a lot of these slogans all of the time, right? I remember having a conversation with my dad and him being like, I don't understand, like, why repeat things over and over? But the way we look at it, especially from an NA perspective, because that's really where my experience is more, is that having these slogans and phrases are really good when things are tough. For example, when you're really, really struggling, sometimes it's hard to remember, like, all of the great advice and suggestions you've had, right? But sometimes you can remember, like, you know, just for today, you know, like about keeping it in the moment, not worrying too far ahead, you know, or, you know, simple things like that. So there are, there is, like, a legitimate reason we have all these crazy, like, little slogans and stuff, but it has come up, and I don't think it's crazy for someone to be like, what's going on, you know? It's like they didn't think for themselves at all. And that, yeah, no, so creepy. They talk about the bad things that happened to them or whatever. And it's like, I was like, none of these things happened to me. But there's this assumption that they have that, well, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't. It's like, okay, so another thing that she's kind of right on about, right? We do really function on this assumption that we call them the not yets, right? And the biggest in NA are jails, institutions, and death, right? And we do have this belief that if you continue using in active addiction, that there's only three possible outcomes, which is jails, institutions, or death. Now, we also talk about not yets as things that we may do in our addiction as it gets worse that may not have happened yet. For example, if somebody is a you know, into taking pills, for example. We may talk about using heroin as a not yet or using a needle as a not yet with the, with the idea that the worse your addiction gets, the more things you may be willing to do to get the next high that maybe are things you never thought that you would do before. And we do kind of put that belief on other people. We do assume that just because you haven't done it yet doesn't mean that you may never do it. And so, yeah, we do talk to people in that way. It's like my so-called sponsor, who was a total lunatic, she locked me in a room for two hours about and screamed at me about how if I didn't quit now, I would become a hooker. Uh, obviously, that is not okay. Um, there is... Under no circumstances should it ever be okay to lock anybody in the room, regardless of whether you're trying to help them or what you're saying, right? Locking someone in a room is not cool, not okay, and definitely not something that the program would ever, ever say is okay. I don't know. Yeah, the point is, though, there's the thing, one of the worst things about AA slash NA people is that they believe that Everything that happened to them will happen to everyone else who does drugs. Again, I can see why she believes this. Um, you know, again, she puts NA and A together, and we do have very different beliefs on a lot of things. Um, but we do kind of believe that our experience, because so many people have a similar experience in active addiction, and I think that's what's really important, because she does flip-flop in parts of her video as to uh, lumping people together who are addicts and people who have used on occasion. And I think that it's important to remember that when we're talking about 12-step programs, we're talking about addicts, people who use compulsively, people who have no control over their using once they start, and they have an inability to stop when they want to. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of times as addicts, we've seen that the longer somebody stays in active addiction, the worse they get because it's just the progression of the disease. Um, but we don't feel that way about people like what we call normal people, people who could like go out to the bar and, and have a beer and, and be fine, right? Like that's a different thing. And so we, we do believe in active addiction that the longer you use, the worse it tends to get for somebody. The sponsor, she was so angry and mean and she was like really kind of vicious and like, if you ever do drugs again, your life will be over. And it's like every person who's left this place has not come back to a meeting has died. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Now, 
obviously I don't know who her sponsor was, um, but there are people who are super passionate and and do sponsorship in a different way, right? Like not everybody believes that sponsorship is the same. Women I sponsor, I don't yell, I'm not angry, uh, but I have seen sponsors who talk very abruptly and straightforward and like play no games with their sponsees. And I can also understand where her sponsor is coming from with the idea of if you leave, you'll die. You know, you'll go right back to using and things will be awful. Unfortunately, uh, as a member of NA, I've seen that a lot. We've seen people stop coming to meetings and then overdose and die. And it happens so often. Are there people who leave, don't go to meetings anymore and are fine? Sure, of course there are, right? But our experience has shown us that a lot of people who leave and don't come back don't make it. And so there is a passion there to like want to help, to like want to make you feel like a part of so that you stay because we see the program work in people's lives and it's not a perfect program and people aren't perfect, but generally people seem to be safer (laughs) when they're, when they're working in recovery than when they're out on their own. And the, The whole idea of NA is trying to get the newcomer to want to be a part of the program so we don't hear about their death later. And so some people are better at explaining that than others. And I definitely think that whatever sponsor she had was not the best fit for her. Um, And that's not her fault, right? We don't know people. We don't know how they're going to sponsor. We're told to get a sponsor when we get into the program. And not every woman or man is going to be the best sponsor. Some people need guidance in a different way. So, yeah, I, again, this is why I'm doing this. I hope you guys understand now why I'm doing this video. Because so much of what she says that she got a lot of hate for in the comments are real experiences that I have heard people have over and over again. And it's only fair if we address them because... This is what people think sometimes, and we can't fault her for having this experience. One of the other things is, I don't think AA and NA are actually treatment for anything. They're like a support group, or like kind of like therapy run by people who have no medical training and uh, think that harassing and bullying people is a good way to get to them to do stuff, which is not true. It's like they kind of harass you into quitting, like bully you into it like again she's completely right na is not a treatment it is not run by professionals the whole concept of na and aa but na specifically as that's my experience uh is one addict helping another sharing our experience our strength and our hope in other words telling people how we got through hard things so that they know they can get through them too It is a peer-to-peer support group style. It is not run by professionals. Um, As in regarding the bullying, harassing, again, like I wish I knew what meetings that she went to because I have been to meetings where people are like super pressured on you need to do this and you need to do that. In general, those aren't the types of meetings that I attend or that I'm a part of, right? The meetings that I'm big on are the ones that say like, you know, just be a part of, like, like where we bring people in and make them feel loved, like, give them that human connection, because for a lot of addicts, we're missing that. We don't, you know, we're not out, like, hanging out with our friends all the time, because a lot of times in active addiction, it brings us to isolation, and so having a group of people where, who understand what you're going through, who, who understand how you feel, is really helpful. No, it is not an, a, a substitution for for doctors or therapists or counsel, right? Like, but they don't claim to be either. Um, it's, it is a peer-to-peer support group and different groups handle newcomers in a different way. Um, I, I feel bad if she felt she was being bullied and harassed because that is not an okay experience to have, but she is right. It, it, there is no medical professionals in NA. Pills are just baby heroin. I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of don't think so. She seemed to think that I didn't know that that um like Percocet and stuff is an opioid. Uh or it has opioids in it, but I do know that. I'm not stupid. I've seen an opioid equivalency chart. That's how I would figure out how much fentanyl I could take. Was with the opioid equivalency chart. Most junkies don't bother with that kind of nonsense because most of them aren't science obsessed weirdos like me. But yeah, the point is 
All right, so she says a few things here. Um, and the only reason I added this clip in is because I think there is this idea that um, addicts aren't always familiar with the substances they use. And I just, that hasn't been my experience. Like one, uh, pills, like painkillers are equivalent to heroin. Um, they are in the same family. And she, as she said, they both are opiates. Um, so yeah, taking pills and, and using heroin is going to have the same impact on your body. Uh, the only difference is, is dosing, as she mentions. And believe it or not, a lot of addicts do understand the opiate equivalent chart. Um, I think a lot of us just didn't care. And, you know, there is a way for people to try and justify using safely by saying, well, I know how much of this I can take because I've taken that. Um, and you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many people in Narcotics Anonymous are actually very well versed on the on the drugs they use. The problem is, is that a lot of times in active addiction, we just don't care anymore. Um, I know there was a period of time where, like, if it was in front of me, I used it. I didn't even ask what it was. I didn't care. Um, and I think that's a big problem with a lot of people in active addiction, specifically when you're buying things off the streets. Like, you don't know what's in it. You can't use an equivalency chart to find out how much fentanyl is in this bag because, it, you know, you're trusting someone to tell you that. Like, you can't get that information. And so when you go from using prescription drugs to buying something on the street, like, the danger is there, and we've seen it. Um, but, yeah, I just thought I did that in. point is, A, it was just, or NA or whatever, it was just a nasty experience and my sponsor was nutcase. And most of it was just sitting still in the stupid little room full of chairs while people told stories that were mildly entertaining, but you weren't allowed to laugh because they were true. Okay, that was mean, but there's one more actually kind of funny. Like there was one lady I used to call the Coke lady, never learned her name. She would always tell, talk about how Coke is terrible, but it helps her lose weight or something. Let's be real. Anybody who's been in meetings long enough knows that there are plenty of stories that people tell that are mildly amusing, even maybe when they shouldn't be. Um, I've seen a lot of laughter in NA meetings, and we usually, especially once you've had a little bit of clean time, you can laugh at yourself, right? Like, we can laugh at our misfortunes now because we're not living in them anymore. Um, though it's funny because she talks about a lady at the end, and, like, I can tell you a meeting where uh, there was a woman who used to talk about uh, her addiction to, to things like that and diet pills and stuff because of the same thing. Because it always helped her lose weight. It was great. And she, she, although she was trying to, like, talk about how things were bad, she tended to sound how, like, it was, like, the best life-changing thing. And you're watching her saying, where are you? <laughs> so, look, you can't control what people share at meetings. And sometimes, you know, look, we're people, right? People are people. And you, you're going to put 100 people in the room. Everybody's going to share differently. There's nothing wrong with finding some people's stories and using, right? Like, it's okay. Or also, the whole, like, you must submit to a higher power. I am very much an atheist. I, I just... Okay, so here's where I think her experience with going to AA and NA kind of intertwine a bit. Um, NA, yes, you need. they talk about finding a higher power. Um, and they talk about how it just has to be something loving, caring, and greater than you. Um, AA has the same beliefs, but there is a lot more God-specific talk where N.A. talks about the fact that God can just stand for good orderly direction. It doesn't have to be like a white man in the sky. Um, N.A. is actually, we have a lot of literature and talk about how atheists can still have a higher power. It doesn't have to be a religious God. This is something that comes up a lot, but that most people who are new into the programs don't really understand. Like, yeah, no, I don't think I can pretend that there's some higher power. And the idea of a higher power just magically making people's addiction go away didn't make any sense. Also, people there were clearly addicted to the meetings and addicted to praying and i was like uh yeah you guys are not your addiction was not magic away by god you just became addicted to something else so again i'm sure she's heard people talk about how their higher power has cured their addiction and but that's not really what na says right like a higher power is about having having support about having something that has your back um, and it's not necessarily the the cure, right? Like we don't, in Narcotics Anonymous, we don't believe there is a cure for addiction. We believe it can be arrested um, and that you can live a, you know, productive, happy life if you are in recovery. And I have seen people be addicted to meetings, 100%. Uh, no matter what anybody says about that, 
I have seen it. I have seen people put meetings above all else. And she's right. It is trading one addiction for another. And at the beginning, what we try to explain to people is that going to meetings addictively, although it is not a long-term solution, nor is it healthy, it is safer uh, than using. Throughout recovery, we then start to teach about balance and how to move away from those addictive behaviors, right? But nobody's cured overnight. And changing, you know, trading your addiction to drugs to an addiction to meetings is a, the lesser of two evils, right? Like it, it's as much safer alternative. But yes, there are many people who are addicted to meetings. And no, that's not a healthy lifestyle either. It's all about balance. But as addicts, we struggle with that. And, you know, it takes time. Oh, religion thing that makes sense to me. People are like, well, if you can't do religion, you could always pretend your higher power is a doorknob. I'm like, Okay, that doorknob thing, that is definitely an AA thing. I have heard that in AA all the time. Uh, that is not something you generally hear in NA. In Narcotics Anonymous, they do say you don't have to have a, a god as in a like a fluffy man in the sky. For many people, the group is their higher power, right? Because it's loving, caring, and as a whole, greater than oneself. It's just about having support, right? And people in NA, they talk about how people's... Um, idea of what a higher power can change and and over time it doesn't always have to be the same thing but for me like my higher power isn't a religious god um i do believe there's something greater you know a lot of people think about the universe or nature as a higher power something that has some sort of order to it um but the doorknob thing is not something you'll hear in narcotics anonymous at all because it doesn't fit the criteria In Narcotics Anonymous, a higher power needs to be loving, caring, and greater than oneself. And I don't think a doorknob fits into that. But I have heard that said in AA before. So when I'm addicted to drugs, I'm actually kind of likable. I mean, they keep me from having meltdowns and, like, freakouts and stuff. And I'm, instead of being, like, super extreme emotional and, like, sobbing hysterically at every upset and just being a total nightmare to be around, I'm, like, kind of normal-ish. So it was this part right here that made me believe that when she went into NA, um, that she was in early recovery. And I'll tell you why. So many of us felt that way. Addiction was such a huge part of our personality. It took a long time for me to separate who I was as a person versus who I was as an addict. And a lot of people feel that way. Like she talked about how, you know, having, you know, being high helped her write poetry and not that it helped her, but that. She wasn't limited by the way she was feeling when she was clean, right? And I think a lot of us felt that way. We use drugs to get out of the emotional state. And being very emotional sometimes is hard. And it's definitely the hardest part of early recovery, having to deal with all these emotions again. And we do, for many of us, felt more normal when we use. I know that's how I felt for years. I felt like I was what other people portrayed when I was using Nobody knew I was high for a long time. That's just how I felt the most me. And it is very hard when you're in early recovery to understand that you don't need drugs to be you, right? It's, it is a, a tough thing. And this is something almost every person I've ever talked to in early recovery has gone through. So for people to come at her for having these feelings, it's like, tell me you didn't feel that way when you first got clean because I know I sure did. I mean, I've read that AA really does work for like, uh, what's it, like 5% of the people who go? She's not being facetious here. The statistics for how well 12-step programs work, although there are studies that show that they are successful, the statistics are pretty bad. Um, the, the rate of people who stay clean in a 12-step program for the first year without any relapse is like 5 maybe 10%. It is very low. And it's one of the reasons as an individual, um, I believe that we need to not be so harsh on people who choose to use something else alongside a 12-step program like medically assisted treatment. That's a personal belief, not a 12-step program belief, but she's not being facetious. Those are real statistics. We need to end the war on drugs. It's just so useless and stupid and petty and it's just a waste of time. Again, something I totally agree with, right? The war on drugs has been shown to do nothing 
but put people who have a real addiction problem in jail. And what does that do, right? They generally don't get help. They come out, they're still addicted, and it's a whole lot of problems. She does not understand, I, I cut part of this out, but she talks about the fact that she doesn't understand when courts make people go to 12-step programs. Uh, she thinks that, especially since she believes it's a religious cult, right? Um, however, the reason that courts have started letting people go to 12-step programs is because they're recognizing that just putting people in jail for using drugs isn't helpful. So generally what the court does is they make you go to rehab and also a 12-step program, hoping that with one of those ways you'll have help. 12-step um, programs, the real benefit is getting to know other people in recovery who have been through what you've been through and that can help with their sharing their experience. And courts have recognized that that shared experience does have success. Even if the program itself isn't perfect for them, they do tend to find other people in recovery and change their, their surroundings, right? Like instead of only knowing using addicts, you now know a lot more people in recovery. And so, yeah, putting people in jail for using drugs isn't the answer. I agree. I think it, the fact that the people that the AA place I went to were like total lunatics, that didn't help. But seriously, the whole thing is just like, it's like a wacky little cult. It makes me okay, so that's kind of like the end of her video. But I can understand why she feels that way. Are you kidding? The big joke in NA is that we're considered a cult, right? And yes, if you're not a part of the program from the outside, it absolutely looks that way. And I think one of the biggest problems and that caused her to have this experience is exactly what she said at the end. The meeting she went to had a lot of wacky people. And I know, I know, anybody watching this who has been in NA or even AA for some significant time have been to meetings where there's nothing but wacky people, right? There's wacky people everywhere, and some meetings just attract them. I think it's important, and my biggest suggestion for anybody who's looking for help in a 12-step program is if you go to a meeting and you think they're all nuts, try a different meeting. Find a meeting that you feel welcome at, that you feel at home at. It may not be the first or second meeting you go to. People tend to go to meetings where there's people that they can relate to. So if you find a bunch of wacky people at one meeting, it's probably because they feel like they can relate to each other. They make meetings for younger people. They make meetings, you know, for, for different groups of people. Spread out. Try something different. Try a meeting that's not at one of those recovery centers where it, people are going to both AA and NA because it does make it confusing because the programs are actually quite different, even though on the outside they seem the same. For example, AA has a reading they do at the beginning called The Promises. NA doesn't have that. NA says the only promise we offer is the freedom from active addiction. I'll link the video. It's in one of, I don't know what, <laughs> one of the corners that I do with about the differences between AA and NA. Um, but look, you don't have to love a program, but there's something nice about being in a room full of people who have been through what you've been through. And we, as members of 12-step programs, need to recognize that this girl's feelings are valid. A lot of people have this experience. This is not the first time I've heard any of this. And so I think that it's one of the reasons I have a channel to begin with, right, is so many people try one type of recovery program, it doesn't fit for them, and they think it's all terrible. Is NA the solution for everybody? No, I don't believe that. Although many NA members may, I don't. I believe there's a lot of different options for people in recovery and that we should explore them all. But I also think that if we are going to be a welcoming, you know, as a, as a member of NA, if I want to help the program be more welcoming, then we need to recognize that some people's experience are not ours. I can tell you about my first experience in NA, and if I left after that meeting, I never would have come back. So we need to, it's, it's our job as people who are in the program for longer to welcome people with open arms, to make them feel like they belong there, accept the fact that they may not understand the program or agree with it at the beginning, and that's okay. You know, we're not supposed to force it on anybody. It's supposed to be the way we're living that attracts people to the program, not us telling people they have to do it. So anyway, I want to know what you think. Did you like this video? Um, the only reason I found her video actually is because for some reason our analytics show that people who watch her video go to mine. So I thought that it may be a really good idea for us to kind of merge the two, right? See how something 
so far on different ends of the spectrum can actually come together, right? And do it without being hateful. There is so much negativity on the internet. Like we don't need to add to it at all. If there's something you want me to react to, somebody's opinion, maybe somebody you know thinks differently than me, let me know. I would love to do it. And remember, please, under no circumstances do we leave negative comments for people at all, even if their opinions are different, because that is not who I am and it's not the kind of audience that I want to have. We need to be loving and we can disagree all day long, but remember, your disagreements with me are different. I've been in recovery a long time. I'm not going to be hurt and upset if someone disagrees with me. But if somebody's struggling or they're new in recovery, we should not in any way try to make them feel bad, right? Like that's just not what we do. So if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is awful? Should I never do something like this again? Um, If you like this video, share it. Let me know. I just... I want to do more on this channel and I want to really interact more. So let me know what you think. I hope you guys are having a great week and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye everyone.